Okay, first, uh, sorry for, for being late. Uh, the whole Food System Summit uh, is running a little bit late in, in, in different sessions and a number of panelists on this one, we were just finishing a section on, re a section on research and innovation. So we are now here to talk about agrobiodiversity. So it's a pleasure to have you all uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen with us uh, today. Uh, this is a session on agrobiodiversity for a sustainable future supported by UNCCD, uh, the Alliance of Biodiversity and SEAT, all behalf, on behalf of CGIR, UNCDD, UNFCCC, IFAD, the Crop Trust, the International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources for Poor and Agriculture, and WWF. I am Juan Lucas Restrepo. I'm their Director General of the Alliance of Biodiversity International and SEAT. And I'm also wearing a new hat as the director, the global director of partnerships and advocacy for uh, CJR. And I'm very pleased to moderate this important session uh, today. So basically, uh, we are here to discuss and to listen to the challenges and opportunities for to increase use and conservation of agrobiodiversity as a means to transform food systems into more sustainable, equitable, and resilient ones. Uh, to nurture the discussion, uh, we have the honor uh, to have uh, the representatives from the UNFSS uh, solution clusters uh, on agrobiodiversity presenting some of these ideas I, they have been working on, uh, on on the past uh, months uh, within the preparation on the summit. Uh, and, and we have planned this so we can also gather a feedback uh, and not only questions but ideas uh, from the audience and we will do as best as we can to to respond them so we will start uh, with a first uh, section uh, which is a panel discussion and then uh, the q a but before starting uh, i have the honor to give the floor through a pre-recorded messages to the three executive secretaries of the rio conventions Ibrahim Pio of the UNCCD, Patricia Espinosa of the UNFCCC, and Elizabeth Merema of the UNCDD, who have uh, their, uh, which want to share their remarks with us today. So let's uh, hear from them, starting from with Ibrahim Pio. Dear colleagues and friends, welcome to this Food System Pre-Summit event on the importance of agrobiodiversity and its linkages to the spirit and letter of the three Rio Conventions. Our climate is changing. Species are being lost at an unprecedented rate, and the health and productivity of our land resources is in persistent decline. Food systems lie at the nexus of these intertwined global challenges. The way in which we produce and consume our food is actually contributing to putting us in peril. Science tells us that food systems are responsible for one third of greenhouse gas emissions, over 80% of deforestation and ecosystem loss, and degradation of almost half of our agricultural land. The depletion of soil, water, and biodiversity compromises the very foundation of our societies and economies. We must come together to act on pragmatic solutions, among which are soil conservation through agrobiodiversity. Healthy soils produce nutritious food with essential vitamins and micronutrients. Crop and livestock diversity provide balanced diets that keep us healthy and help our children to grow strong. Over the past century, we have lost many of the crops varieties and genetic resources that have sustained us for millennia. As a consequence, our diets have become simplified, in fact, poorer. Agroecosystems have lost their resilience, thus increasing our vulnerability to shocks and extreme events. Our health has suffered as a result. So is our wealth if we consider the loss of our natural capital. Building on existing international agreements and frameworks, we have the genetic bricks 
for future breeding and innovation. This will boost resilience and human health during the rocky road ahead. In other words, we need to boost our collective immunity. The vaccine for that is the restoration of diversity to food production and diets. Healthy soils are an open, tested, and proven technologies. Under the UN Convention to Combat Desertification, for example, commitments under the land degradation natality targets focus on improving productivity in farming and grazing lands. We are looking for bold actions to take to the UN's Food System Summit for ideas, for innovation, for new business models and enduring partnerships. We may have missed the best chance to avoid a crisis. However, to avoid transforming the crisis into a catastrophe, the second best chance is now. Thank you. Okay, uh, great. Uh, let's hear from uh, Patricia, please. Dear friends, greetings from Bonn. I am grateful for the opportunity to address this important forum on the role of agrobiodiversity in shaping a sustainable future. I often say that climate change is the challenge of our time, and I firmly believe this. But it could also be argued that it is one aspect of an even larger issue our collective responsibility to protect and preserve the natural world. If global warming is a source of grave concern and increasingly of suffering for countries and communities from every region, it is because by destabilizing weather patterns, it threatens the natural balance upon which all life depends. Restoring that balance in land, sea, and air is, therefore, the most wide-ranging and demanding task we face today. And all contributions to this goal are to be acknowledged and encouraged. That is why the work of those institutions devoted to protecting the rich variety of life on Earth is so important. The role of our sister organizations, UNCCD and UNCBD, as well as that of dozens of public and non-governmental bodies around the world, is central to this vital task. From the standpoint of climate change, agrobiodiversity is important because it contributes to carbon capture helps to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and strengthens adaptation and resilience. In short, it reconciles current agricultural practices with the long-term climate needs of both nature and humanity. Just as preventing runaway climate change is essential to preserve biodiversity and sustainable agriculture, so fostering agrobiodiversity helps to combat the rise in global temperature and thus avoid the most dangerous consequences of climate change. Dear friends, we have always known how much we depend on nature. Only recently, however, have we come to understand how closely nature depends on us. And it is urgent that we act in accordance with this realization. I have highlighted the close links that exist between sustainable agriculture and the fight against climate change. But of course, biodiversity should not be construed just as a means to an end. The abundance, complexity, and diversity of life are worth preserving for their own sake. They constitute essential features of the world we inherited 
and which we must pass on to future generations. This is ultimately why your work and today's forum are so important to all of us. I wish you every success in your proceedings. Thank you. Great to hear from uh, Patricia. Uh, let's uh, see what from the CBD Elizabeth wants to tell us. Dear Mr. Resrepo, Director General of the Alliance of Biodiversity International and CIAT. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, greetings. I would like to thank you and the organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak at this important and timely event. The world is currently faced with multiple interlocking challenges. The genetic diversity of cultivated plants, farmed and domesticated animals, and their wild relatives continue to be eroded. Biodiversity loss, climate change, land degradation, malnutrition, poverty, and food insecurity are all threatening the long-term viability of humanity. But importantly, agrobiodiversity can be an incredibly powerful lever in addressing these challenges holistically. Agrobiodiversity can help improve nutrition and support livelihood. Landscapes with greater crop diversity generate a greater diversity of nutrients essential for human health. Crop diversity also stabilizes food production, improves crop yields, and supports more agricultural jobs. In particular, neglected and underutilized species provide nutrient-dense, climate-resilient, profitable, and locally adaptable options for improving crop and dietary diversity. By serving as a source of habitat and food, crop diversity can also support the diverse species that pollinate our plants, control our pests, and circle essential nutrients within our soils. These species are essential for the maintenance and restoration of productive ecosystems and for our food security. Let us not forget that most global macronutrients and protein are produced by smallholders on diverse agricultural landscapes. In this regard, we need to remember that smallholders are stewards of biodiversity and play a key role in maintaining the genetic diversity of our food supply. This results in both benefits and risk reductions against nutritional deficiencies, ecosystems degradation, and climate change. Overall, prioritizing a rich diversity of species in our production systems and conserving the genetic diversity of cultivated species and their wild relatives will provide us with a more stable supply of nutritious food while simultaneously safeguarding biodiversity and ecosystem services for long-term productivity. Ladies and gentlemen, as we move towards negotiating and adopting an ambitious global biodiversity framework, it is imperative that we catalyze the role of biodiversity in supporting productive and sustainable food systems. Therefore, I encourage all stakeholders to join the coalition of actors which are forming around agrobiodiversity in the lead up to the summit as this coalition can anchor synergistic approaches between the 15th meeting of the Conference of the Parties to the Convention on Biological Diversity and the UN Food Systems Summit. The post-2020 Global Biodiversity Framework will be an important tool for conservation and sustainable use 
of agrobiodiversity and to ensure that nature continues to underpin the successful delivery of all the sustainable development goals. Thank you. Okay, uh, no, we, we are very thankful to Ibrahim, Patricia, and Elizabeth for highlighting the crucial role that agrobiodiversity plays in the fight against uh, climate change, environmental degradation, and malnutrition. The secretaries of the three UN conventions align around agrobiodiversity as a solution. So moving on uh, in our uh, panel, let me introduce our speakers, speakers today. I will be very brief and ask them to turn on their videos as they take the floor. So we have, we started with Carlo Fada, uh, he's the director of biodiversity for food and agriculture in the Alliance of Biodiversity International and CIAF at CGIR. We have uh, Stefan Schmidt, uh, executive director of the Crop Trust. Uh, we have with us Kent uh, Mandosier, Secretary of the International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture. Uh, we got with us, with us uh, Rick Grant Oliveira, the Senior Global Technical Specialist at IFAD, uh, and uh, Florence Jantet, Managing Director of OP2B. She will tell us what OP2B is later. So let's start with Carlo. Uh, Carlo, what do you see is the role of agrobiodiversity uh, that can play within more sustainable production and food systems? Uh, keep your intervention to three minutes, please. Yeah, thank you, Juan Lucas, and uh, good evening, good morning, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I think it has been mentioned. Uh, the, 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 the videos are very clear. There are major crises for climate, nutrition, environmental, these crises are all interlinked because they are all linked to how do we produce and we consume our food. And the speakers uh, were very clear that agrobiodiversity is a solution for all those crises. So it's a kind of uh, important uh, part of, of that solution. But how do we do it? So first of all, we need to close a knowledge gap. It was mentioned uh, about the fact that uh, a lot of of these traditional varieties are kept by the smallholder farmers. There is a lot of traditional knowledge around those crops and diversity. Uh, and, and so this knowledge is, is, is really important. So one thing I would really emphasize is that the knowledge is really important if we want to accelerate the pace at which agrobiodiversity uh, can be mainstream in production system. And this is because research has long time. It takes long and the moment is now. We cannot delay this even further. So uh, research needs to be participatory. Uh, very recently, uh, the a Manifesto of Forgotten Foods, which was developed by the Alliance of Biodiversity in CRG, Farfara, Rinen, and Dapari, uh, indicated a strong demand for greater use of agrobiodiversity, integration of traditional knowledge. Over 4,000 stakeholders participated in this. Secondly, we need to make this reproductive material available to farmers uh, through functioning and efficient seed system. This is another key pillar of mainstreaming agrobiodiversity. And this seed system we probably need, uh, is really about strengthening the informal seed system that already exists so that they can have uh, more diversity, but also better quality seeds, which are really important to also contribute to food security, for example. Thirdly, another aspect which needs to take into account is really how this can, how agrobiodiversity can help to reduce poverty and improve livelihoods. It's, of course, the climate concerns are very important, but then we still have uh, uh, important elements of, of poverty. So these custodian farmers, 500 million, just to be clear, we're talking about, are willing to be linked to the market and even become entrepreneurs and create small and medium enterprise for food processing, uh, for example. Uh, but what needs to be done is to make sure that markets are open to embrace this diversity, that there is a greater opportunity and an incentive uh, to link those farmers, for example, to niche markets for healthy foods, etc. Finally, but that is not in order of importance, is the role of the global ex situ conservation system. If we need the biodiversity in production system, we need to tap in the amazing amount and huge amount of diversity that is conserved 
uh, by the international uh, conservation, ex situ conservation, as well as national geographies. Now, just let me advertise one point. If all of, there will be a very specific agrobiodiversity conference in November that will tap on all those points. Uh, by that time, the food system summits will be over. We will be able during the, the conference to reflect on some of the, the deliberation of the UN food system summits related to agrobiodiversity. And we will really try to start operationalize an agenda that will uh, uh, mainstream agrobiodiversity to fight climate change, nutrition, and environmental degradation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Carlo. And it was important to listen to you seeing that varieties of crops important for nutrition and food security are still being neglected uh, and provide a great opportunity for food systems transformation. So moving on to Kent, uh, we know farmers need to have access to a diversity of well-adapted varieties of crops that meet agroecological and nutritional needs and preferences. In what ways can a global multilateral system for the conservation and exchange of plant genetic resources contribute to the transformation of the food system? And how can smallholder farmers benefit from this multilateral system of crop, crop, crop conservation? Over to you, Kent. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Juan Lucas, uh, for this opportunity. And thanks again to, to the organizers of, of this event. Uh, I mean, it's been said and is already established from the previous interventions and, and the, the initial addresses we got that we have a crisis on our hands and we have to find solutions to them. And from what has been seen and also some of the uh, initiatives that have been uh, facilitated and established in the context of the uh, UN Food System Summit, that it's been known that and established that agrobiodiversity has emerged as one of the game-changing solutions for the future of food systems, especially in the context of climate change. And agrobiodiversity is a cornerstone of a of sustainable food system. So effectively, the food security that we have and having a sustainable future will start with the seed. And it is in this context that crop diversity is the, one of the most important global public goods. And it has, has you know, been the very foundation of a resilient system but unfortunately, its loss across the world is increasing. And it, whenever we lose diversity, it's irreversible. Uh, with, and it has dire consequences on the future of global food security. And, and farmers need to have access to this diversity of well-adapted varieties of crops that meet agroecological and nutritional needs and their own preferences as well. So therefore, meeting the needs of farmers and increasing their you know, ability to continuously adapt food production to climate change will reduce poverty uh, and halt the loss of agrobiodiversity. So there's no doubt that appropriate uh, seeds is essential to, you know, to facilitating the, the change that, that we require to have a sustainable uh, future, uh, especially in our food systems. But what do we need to improve and increase and ensure greater access of smallholder farmers to material that they need to adapt and also to continue producing the food that we need in the context of changing climate and increasing populations. Well, the International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture establishes a multilateral system that facilitates access to uh, both farmers and breeders and researchers to enable them to address some of these challenges, but at the same time, create a system of continuously conserving and ensuring that we do not continue losing the diversity that we need for future needs and also unforeseen circumstances. So in this context, being able to understand and, you know, and facilitate the continuous use of genetic traits of both locally adapted species, but also improved varieties to restore ecosystems that are you know, tree crops, forages, and livestock on breeds, it is important to have access to the broadest range of diversity that we have, and which the international treaties uh, multilateral system uh, provides. In that context as well, it is not just being able to provide the material, but there's a need to create stronger link between both the conservation efforts, 
whether it is in you know, gym banks or in institute, in there's a lot of activities in the area, but also linking it for further downstream to activities of breeders, farmers, and ultimately the consumers that would, you know, that would um, use and, 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 and eat uh, the, the food that is produced in, in that context. So creating a very viral, you know, vital and, 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 um, and, and um, strong linkages and connection between the different links in the chain is essential and fundamental. It is also important to ensure that as we continue to provide this diversity, we also understand the interconnectivity, the interdependence of all um, of all systems and of of all um, uh, stakeholders, as well as all uh, different sectors. Uh, sectors. What we are facing now is a global crisis, which requires global solution, both you know localized but also across across uh, international borders. Uh, the international treaties multilateral system by creating this system of interconnection and, and inter you know in, in, interaction among stakeholders and different systems provides the platform both for policy action but also for technological support but and, and and material support to farmers in the in this regard so it can play a very important role in facilitating access to plant material creating connections between researchers and farmers or different sectors between the private sector, you know, uh, the, the governments, the, the public sector, uh, the academia, and also creating and, and providing the corresponding need, uh, addressing the corresponding need for support from multi-stakeholder partnerships. And we think that it is important and absolutely inevitable and, and, and essential that all stakeholders must work together to address this, all these challenges. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Kent, uh, for highlighting the importance of a multilateral system for access and benefit sharing and great possibilities. And I like what you mentioned on that, you know, transforming the food system starting from the seeds. So let's uh, move to Stefan uh, and ask him about the main challenges that uh, global agricultural systems are facing when it comes to ensuring the genetic diversity of our crops is accessible in the long run? What are the roles uh, of seed banks and seed repositories on, in this regard? And how can innovative finance help scale up our ongoing efforts to safeguard and mainstream agricultural biodiversity into food systems? Over to you. Thank you, Veronica. Um, the pressures on agriculture will increase in the future. The climate is changing and with the likelihood of crop failure, including due to the emergence of new pests and diseases. Meeting these challenges will only be possible if the genetic diversity contained in crops and their wild relatives remain available uh, for use. Properly resourced gene, gene banks can conserve huge amounts of crop diversity for the long term using fairly simple, well understood technology. Gene banks not just conserve diversity, they also provide a means to make unique diversity available so that it may be used by researchers and breeders in the future, returned to farmers and offered to consumers. They provide a safety net, a last resort that enables specific traits to be reintroduced into farming systems after they have been lost due to natural and human induced disasters. The security function of gene banks is becoming increasingly important as the genetic diversity of crops in the field and crop wild relatives in nature are threatened. In addition to this security function, gene banks also have a service function that would make sense even if the threat to diversity in the field and nature did not exist at all. Gene banks are able to supply larger quantities of good quality seeds for research and breeding purposes. It is often difficult to collect, for example, adequate numbers of seeds of good quality from plants growing in the wild. Collections maintained in well-run gene banks remain genetically stable over time, unlike the varieties maintained by farmers under in situ conservation. Well-run gene banks have the facilities, administrative systems, and experience not only to maintain samples, but also to distribute them nationally and internationally. The crop trust is recognized as an essential element of the funding strategy of the International Plant Treaty. 
It provides long-term funding for a rational, effective and efficient global system that can uh, secure crop diversity forever. The core activity of the crop trust are funded through sustainable investment income generated from its endowment fund. To strengthen the global system of ex situ conservation, an additional 500 million US dollar needs to be raised to achieve its total endowment target of 850 million US dollar. The crop trust is exploring the issuance of a 30 year bond to private sector investors. Investors. This food security bond would be supported by a government guarantee and government grants to pay the bond coupon in order to reduce the cost to the crop trust. All bonds proceed would be invested in the existing endowment fund with net investment returns to be used to fund the conservation of crop diversity in gene banks. The crop trust in parallel is also working to engage a wider set of industry stakeholders. To this end, the crop trust has developed a series of crop conservation strategies that provide a detailed overview of the collections that harbor the main biodiversity for each specific crop and what it entails to ensure their long-term conservation. Ongoing efforts are taking place in the coffee and tea industries with key support from industry groups. And we hope to replicate these experiences in all the other crops which are critical for food and nutrition security. Thank you and back to you, uh, Juan Lucas. Uh, th thanks a lot, Stefan. Uh, it's great to hear about your efforts on leveraging on innovative finance to meet uh, long-term conservation goals. Uh, so let's turn uh, now to Rike uh, and, and to understand how does a uh, uh, so, you know, IFAD support the use of agrobiodiversity in small scale production systems, uh, your focus, and what benefits does it bring for those farmers and their communities? Over to you. Thank you very much, Juan Lucas. Um, yeah, so IFAD invests with small scale producers. Our main mandate is poverty, po rural poverty reduction. So EFAT's project support to small-scale producers when it comes to agrobiodiversity is, is really to improve the resilience and adaptation to climate change as one entrance point. And the other one is to support local food systems, both for income generation, but also for nutrition. These priorities are actually part of EFAT's mainstreaming priorities and at the core of what we do. Another reason that we work on agrobiodiversity is when we work with indigenous and traditional communities, then agrobiodiversity type of activities is often required by the, or requested by the communities. And these communities are a very important part of, of our target group in EFAD. Another one is that agrobiodiversity is an important entrance point for empowering women, which is another priority in EFAD. For example, in IFAD's projects in the northeastern Brazil, we have been supporting the use of agroecology logbooks. So these are books where women keep records on the diversity of crops they cultivate in their backyard gardens, and also from the food, from different uh, varieties of nuts, fruits that they collect from their landscapes. And the other thing they record is the income that they generate for their families from this cultivation of very agrobiodiverse backyards. These blog books have then proven not only to make the women able to share what they do and learn from each other, but actually also to visualize the work that women are doing in conserving agrobiodiversity, but most of all also for this income generation and support of the food securities of the families. Another example, as IFAD is stepping up, it is support for small-scale producers' contribution to and benefits from sustainable food system. IFAD is also increasingly supporting commercialization strategies, building on local food tradition and crops. This includes connecting small-scale producers and their communities in working relationship with chefs, interested in including local dishes and products in what they offer in their restaurants, it also includes to do technical training and capacity building of youth who are interested in building their own food businesses based on local crops and food. 
And recently, IFA has supported the Fundación ACUA, ACUA, working in Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru, on a new concept that in the middle of, of the sadness of the pandemic actually took up because of the pandemic and the lockdowns. In this concept, local food tradition knowledge leaders from Afro communities, both from Colombia and they did it in Ecuador and Peru, they offer cooking classes online where people interested can go on beforehand and purchase the kits that they need to use for, for this cooking class with all the needed ingredients and that is produced by the communities. So this has been an innovative way using the lockdowns and people more interested in food of giving new channels to sell the traditional products coming from local agrobiodiversity for these communities. Another important element, of course, that has also been spoken about by the other speakers is the conservation of agrobiodiversity through the support for local seed systems. Here, we see that even though we do have activities in supporting communities in recovering, sharing, and stories of seeds in local seed banks, it's actually not a, it's, it's one of the activities where we could do more and we are aware that we can do more moving into the future. In a recent stock take we did on agroecology in IFA's portfolio, we found that while 81% of the projects supporting agroecology does support integrated farming systems with really high levels of diversity of crops and animals, but only 11% of these projects at the same time supported this kind of community seed systems, local seed banks. One of the examples we have that did do that, or that are still doing it, is a project again in Brazil that is supporting the local guardians of seeds. So it's a whole network of young people from the communities who have been trained in how to store seeds, how to collect them, how to also collect the knowledge about what the characteristic is, what the resilience capacity is. And then they have actually built a business where they sell these seeds to the local farmers. There's a huge interest because of the climate change to step up the use of these local varieties who are a lot more resistant to the drought conditions that they have in the northeastern Brazil. So that's another example. And finally, I just want to finish with uh, the innovation grants that we have. We have over the years supported actually the Allianz, the Allianz Biodiversity ACA in supporting different projects on, on news, so the neglected and underutilized species. Currently, we have a grant which we find very interesting, which is again under this more innovation category, where we work with national research institutions in Nepal, Bhutan, Jordan, Iran, Ethiopia, and Uganda in what is the participatory approach for evolutionary plant breeding. So this is really an approach that supports the boost of genetic diversity in farmers' hands. So what it does is it works with researchers from the gene banks to do a mixture of seeds of hundreds, sometimes up to thousand varieties in one bag. When the farmers cultivate these mixtures of varieties of a crop in the field, these crops can evolve with the different pressures that comes from mostly the climate change. So what we have seen is that this is a methodology that is very adapted to, in particular, remote and marginalized conditions where people don't have a lot of inputs to contract to the climate change shocks. What we also see is that these crops coming out or the harvest coming out of these, these um, seed mixtures are actually more nutritious. So what we have seen is through trials that both in Jordan and Iran, when they feed these crops of barley to their animals, they produce more milk and they also get more offsprings. But this is another interesting one. We still need more research and more proof. But we think this is really, it's not new in that sense, evolutionary plant breeding has been around for many years. But is it a way we can look to now to how do we really boost the availability of the genetic diversity in farmers' hands? So it's not only sitting in our seed banks that we heard about, but it comes back into farmers' fields so we can solve these tremendous challenges that farmers are under right now because of the climate change. Thank you very much. Thanks to you, Enrique. Uh, we've heard the clear evidence on of agrobiodiversity on the farm as a tool for resilience and income generation, as well as for the empowerment of rural women. Let's uh, finally move to Florence uh, and ask her why and how 
are businesses benefiting from and contributing to mainstreaming agrobiodiversity? Over to you. You are muted, Florence. Not yet. Valerio, can you unmute Florence from, from your side? Yes, I've, I've... Thank you. It's unmuted now, right? Yeah, now it's fine, perfect. Do you hear me? <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, Oh, okay, I was unmuted uh, from the system. Thank you. So, um, good afternoon, uh, good morning uh, to everyone uh, listening here. Thank you for the invitation in such an interesting panel and on a very important topic for the organization I'm representing, OP2B. So, OP2B is One Planet Business for Biodiversity. It's actually a unique international cross-sectorial action-oriented business coalition on biodiversity with a very specific focus on agriculture. It's 25, um, over 25 members, front runner on biodiversity that have decided uh, 18 months ago to join forces to accelerate the change that we all want to see and catalyze action to protect and restore cultivated, but also natural biodiversity within their supply chain. You may wonder why, actually. These frontrunner leaders of this organization have clearly identified that bringing back more biodiversity will make the business through their supply chain more resilient, while contributing to a much bigger agenda and common agenda on fixing the uh, climate. So solution for biodiversity and scale up of biodiversity is actually solution for climate, people, and is a full source of potential innovation. So how are we going to uh, do that through this uh, organization and together? By scaling up regenerative agriculture on one side and by bringing more biodiversity in the portfolio on, on, uh, on the second, second side. Why uh, scaling up regenerative agriculture help biodiversity because first of all it's about bringing back the soil to life and this is a new frontier soil biodiversity that we need to explore for uh, the common goods and our future regenerative agriculture is also not only about the crop biodiversity but also the farm biodiversity and the landscape biodiversity that we are trying to achieve for which Coming back to active ecosystem contributing to production, so living land, is an integrated part of the model of the agrobiosity. So it is uh, very important to get back to pollinization, for instance, and we are truly promoting uh, through some uh, companies to pollinization action. This is uh, also part, reintroduction of biodiversity is also part of the model by itself because it's about crop rotation. So we need more species to do that. It's about cover crop and it's about bringing the practices that will make the system resilient with the ecosystem services which is provided by the full system. So it's an approach which is beneficial for nature and beneficial for uh, everyone as we just said. But we go beyond in what we are trying to achieve and pushing this idea beyond regenerative agriculture. So about the soil and the way we manage that is the biodiversity of the portfolio of the companies, more biodiversity in the portfolio uh, and going, first of all, beyond the existing crops that the companies are using and beyond the existing genetics. So those companies, and we've heard that also uh, from Stefan already, are trying to go and find a diversity with the farmers and the local experts to make sure that the crops which are already today unfortunately mm -hmm. suffering from climate are still crop for tomorrow at the same place with the farmers. It goes into beyond the genetic, it, too, it goes into the variety of the crop and uh, we cannot continue to rely on five staple crop. We need to explore the thousands of the hundreds at least of uh, human cons good uh, crops 
that are good for nutrition and good for the planet that we tend to forget. And I want here to mention the initiative taken by uh, Unilever some time ago already to get into the four forgotten crops. Companies go beyond these two activities and it's something that is maybe a little bit less known. As we heard, they are working together indeed to across um, cooperation within the same commodities area to leverage their uh, resources, uh, genetic resources. But some of them are really going a mile further. And I want here to uh, really mention two examples where the companies are really investing for our common goods. And I want to mention in vivo in France, uh, who is currently for many years nurturing actually a wheat library with um, hundreds of different wheat varieties, but also uh, an organization called L'Occitane, which is uh, in the food system, but not a food industry, it's a cosmetic uh, company, who actually are saving to the world lavender into the France as much as almond, who actually were disappearing in the south of France. So there is a big commitment to move uh, beyond what is just expected from the company. Why? Because the company sees themselves having a core responsibility of nurturing biodiversity. Count on us. We, can, we will do it, but we can't do it together. We will do it with the farmers and all the people who are willing to contribute to this journey. And I'm sure the coalition that we are thinking of in this system uh, will uh, help a lot to achieve this very important goal. Thank you. You will do it uh, with the comments. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Florence. Uh, creating demand for agrobiodiversity to promote its use and greater conservation. Thanks to the panelists for your insights on the role of agrobiodiversity to achieve sustainable and resilient food systems. So for us, for the UNFSS Agrobiodiversity Solution Cluster, it's very important to hear from you, uh, from those of you in the audience, around 100 uh, people at this moment. So we would like to use a Slido, uh, the, the screen uh, you are seeing, just to capture some of your reactions, comments, ideas on what uh, you have heard. So we can use that, of course, as an input into the further uh, discussions, ongoing discussions on the agrobiodiversity uh, cluster. So basically connect to slido.com, insert that code, or basically screen that uh, QR you see on the screen. And uh, just let's use the five next minutes before uh, closing uh, to capture some of your insights, ideas, questions uh, on uh, this very important topic of agrobiodiversity around food system transformation. So let's say, uh, hear or read from all of you. Okay, so we are already starting to see some uh, entries um, on the, the use of neglected crops and their role to fight climate change. As uh, we heard, uh, a vaccine uh, against uh, desertification and climate change, uh, for example. Um, they would like to know more about the Agrobiodiversity Congress. I will do that in a couple of minutes uh, before a uh, closing. I'll give you some more information related to that.
how do the panelists see that the political and research systems can be changed to support agrobiodiversity? That's kind of one of our main channels. It's not only mainstreaming agrobiodiversity, but for that to happen, to make sure we bring that uh, interest incentives uh, to the highest uh, political and institutional uh, levels. Um, we are hearing, um, okay, how to improve the care orientation culture of agrobiodiversity in nations. Um, let's see what else we can get. We will not be able to answer uh, your questions, but as I mentioned, we will be capturing them and, and incorporating them and making sure we bring them into this discussion. And of course, we will use and rely after the summit on the Agrobiodiversity Congress to drill down and deepen discussions with all of you around these very important uh, topics. What does news include? Does it include wild edible species or only restricted to crops? Uh, it's, uh, I, my understanding, uh, more uh, open than that, but it has been used mostly uh, around uh, crops. How to improve the care orientation culture of agrobiodiversity nations? Okay, that, that one we we heard. So, okay, my, my invitation is, given we are very short of time, uh, take a few minutes, even after we close uh, this session, uh, to help us, to give us your inputs, to give us your insights, to ask uh, your questions, so, uh, and we commit to bring them on board, take them into account and, uh, and into consideration in this important process around this cluster uh, towards the Food System Summit. So let me uh, then uh, uh, go into uh, our closing uh, remarks. So I'd like to thank you all very much for your contributions uh, to this discussion. We've heard from the panelists and from the secretaries of the conventions about the potential of agrobiodiversity to bolster food systems transformation, improving nutrition, securing livelihoods, and benefiting the environment. We all, we've also heard that to make sure we don't lose this diversity, we need to use it and conserve it, both on farms, on the wild, and in gym banks. And of course, conserving this diversity means preserving the culture, traditions, and knowledge that come uh, with them. Uh, these and other teams, uh, as I uh, mentioned, will be at the center, and as Carlo mentioned, of the second International Agrobiodiversity Congress that will take place virtually in Rome from the 15th to the 18th of November 2021. Uh, this Congress uh, will gather the conclusions of the summit around agrobiodiversity and support its implementation by showcasing as well the latest research and innovation on this topic. So we are providing in the chat a, a link to the Congress so you can use it uh, to register uh, to, for, for this Congress. I'm also very excited to announce that I, a first draft of a declaration uh, has just been made available on the Congress uh, website and the idea is to work on this declaration on agrobiodiversity agro so we can launch it at the summit. So I would also like to invite you to read this important document and register to the Congress uh, using the link. So basically this is the end of our meeting. Sorry for running late uh, a few minutes, but let me thank you all for your participation and we are all looking forward to seeing you at the summit and at the Congress in November. Thanks a lot and take care.